el Colegio Mexicano de Ortopedia, en su 75 aniversario, presenta su segundo congreso virtual 2021. Robin Daly es doctor en investigación y ocupa el cargo de presidente en ejercicio y en envejecimiento. Codirige el dominio de investigación de prevención y manejo de enfermedades crónicas y es jefe del grupo de salud musculoesquelética y movilidad en el Instituto de Actividad Física y Nutrición de la Universidad Deakin, Melbourne, Australia. Su investigación se centra en comprender cómo el ejercicio y los enfoques nutricionales pueden prevenir y controlar enfermedades, en particular la osteoporosis, la sarcopenia, las caídas y las fracturas. Creó el programa de ejercicios de prevención de la osteoporosis basado en la comunidad Osteosize, Strong Bones for Life que recibió fondos federales para su implementación en Australia. También está interesado en el papel de la tecnología digital como modelo de prestación de servicios para la prescripción de programas de ejercicios y autogestión para adultos mayores y para aquellos con afecciones crónicas. Ha escrito artículos sobre caídas accidentales y fuerza muscular y en 2019 fue ubicado como uno de los investigadores más citados en el campo de la endocrinología y el metabolismo. Ha publicado tres libros y más de 190 artículos arbitrados. Actualmente es presidente de la Sociedad Australiana y Neozelandesa para la Investigación de la Sarcopenia y la Fragilidad y miembro de Sports Medicine Australia y de la Sociedad Americana para la Investigación Ósea y Mineral. El doctor Daly hablará sobre corrección postural en adultos mayores con fracturas vertebrales. Hello and welcome to my presentation on postural correction in older adults with vertebral fractures. My name is Dr. Robin Daly and I'm the Professor and Chair of Exercise and Aging within the Institute for Physical Activity and Nutrition here at Deakin University in Melbourne, Australia. So for people with vertebral fractures, there are a number of exercise or therapy considerations that we need to keep in mind. Do they have acute or progressive or chronic back pain? Do they have altered back, altered back extensor muscle strength? And we know that this can influence um, balance and postural sway, which can result in an increased risk for falls. Do they have a loss of flexibility or range of motion? And, and what is most common is uh, a lack of flexibility in spinal extension, the shoulders, or in functional actual rotation. We know that kyphosis can lead to a reduction in pulmonary capacity, which can reduce their aerobic capacity. And it's also associated with increasing compressive loads on the spine, which increases further their risk of having another vertebral fracture. We know that kyphosis also results in greater activity of the back extensor muscles to counteract the forward flexion associated with Kyphosis, and this can lead to, again, co-contraction and increased compressive loads on the spine. For people that do have hyperkyphosis, it's often linked to us this compensatory use of the hip rather than the ankle strategy uh, to when balance is challenged, which again increases the risk of having a fall. So we need to take into account all these considerations when prescribing therapy or exercise for people with vertebral fractures. So in terms of the clinical recommendations, the current guidelines um, would, would suggest that we need to consider activities to minus, minimise spinal loads after the vertebral fractures to reduce pain and facilitate return to normal function. We know that the vertebral bodies support 80% of the body weight and most of the chronic pain is linked to kyphotic deformities. And so we need to prescribe activities to minimise pain and support movement. Multimodal programs or therapies are critical and these should in include exercises that target the back extensor muscles, the core and the postural muscles, include 
range of motion activities, particularly in the spine and the extremities, as well as progress to balance and mobility training to improve uh, physical function. And we also need to provide instructions on spine sparing strategies, include postural alignment during exercise and particularly proper body mechanics during everyday activity movements to reduce the risk, again, of having another fracture. So in terms of range of motion or postural exercises, we know that the loads on the spine are least in the supine position, followed by the prone, standing, then seated position. And so here are some activities which you might prescribe for people with a vertebral fracture. And for people that suffer pain, you know, just lying supine several times during the day can help alleviate pain. Then they might progress to these other supine type activities where they're um, focusing on you know, trying to improve the range of motion through the shoulders or the thoracic spine. You might progress to some prone type exercises, which have an emphasis on strengthening those regions and then some standing type activities. So just bear in mind that for some people with kyphosis, they may need to put a pillow under their head um, or their abdomen to ensure that they maintain a neutral spine. Now we know it's critically important to really optimize the back extensor muscles. And there is evidence to support that this is very effective. Here was a, a trial which was conducted looking at the effects of back extensor exercises versus flexion exercises or the combination on the progression or those that had um, a vertebral or worsening uh, wedge or compression fracture. So these were postmenopausal women randomized to either extension, flexion, the combination or no exercise. And what they showed here that those that did the flexion exercises, 89% of them over the follow-up period, which was sort of arranged from about one and a half to two years, you know, had worsening or developed new compression fractures. So this just highlights that we need to be very careful with the type of exercises we prescribe. And flexion exercises can be particularly dangerous, but extension exercises are effective. So the evidence to support different types of exercise or multimodal programs for people with vertebral fractures is somewhat limited. There's not very many well-conducted studies. One of the um, nice studies was conducted by Kim Bunnell where she did this multimodal postural and spinal extension uh, or strengthening exercise program in men and women who had pain, painful vertebral fractures. And they also, as part of this intervention, included some postural taping type activities, as well as massage and some education. Now you can see from the illustrations, they prescribed a range of different postural exercises, which they will perform daily. There was five to sort of 10 to second holds, five repetitions for each of these activities, as well as various muscle strengthening exercises, which were performed three days uh, per week. Now, what they found was that this intervention was effective for reducing pain. It improved physical function and spinal muscle endurance and health quality of life, but didn't have an effect on posture or their kyphosis. And perhaps the study was too short in terms of its duration to see some benefits. Probably the person that's been leading um, a lot of this work is Wendy Katzman, who's conducted a number of trials looking at sort of multimodal type exercise programs primarily in women with kyphosis. And this was one trial she conducted. It was a six-month trial in women aged over 60 who had kyphosis. It was a multimodal intervention, including spinal extensor, muscle strength training, spinal alignment training, spinal mobility, breathing, and postural correction exercise. It was done three times per week for 60 minutes. Again, you can see the types of activities which were prescribed for the different types of groups. And what they found for this particular intervention was that it was effective for improving kyphosis compared to the control group. Now, interestingly, there was no significant differences in either spinal extensor muscle strength or endurance. And so they hypothesized that the improvements in kyphosis may have been related to the postural training and perhaps the intensity of the training uh, for muscle strength and endurance was not high enough to elicit benefits because there are other trials which have been conducted in women with, women with vertebral fractures which have certainly shown that this, types of, this type of training can improve back extensor muscle strength. Another um, area of interest for people with vertebral fractures is whether um, spinal orthosis can actually reduce um, the risk of a subsequent fracture, but also improve strength and reduce pain. And so one of the very early studies um, which looked at the effects of whether these 
uh, orthosis type devices, which really basically help to maintain spinal alignment, alignment, reduce the fatigue on the trunk muscles. And they, and they do this via a feedback type mechanism. So the person wears these um, devices and when they start to slump forward, it sort of reminds them to sit up straight and correct their posture. And one of the very early trials by um, Pfeiffer is a six month trial in 62 women with vertebral fractures and kyphosis who wore these devices on average for about two hours daily, did see some impressive improvements in back extensor muscle strength, abdominal strength, they had an improvement in their vital capacity, a reduction in their kyphosis angle, an improvement in postural sway and reduced pain. Now there's been several other trials which have looked at the effects of these types of devices and there are a range of different ones available and they've reported somewhat mixed results. And some of the issues um, that they've encountered is that the compliance is often very poor for women wearing these devices. Other tips and tricks when we're prescribing exercises for uh, people with vertebral fractures, I think we certainly should consider targeting back extensor muscle endurance. Remember the back extensor muscles are postural muscles. And so you may start off particularly with isometric type holds and then progress to sort of dynamic movements. We do need to minimize anything related to rapid, repetitive, weighted, end of range of motion or twisting activities of the spine because we know they increase um, compressive loads on the spine. Um, and can increase the risk of a subsequent fracture. Resistance training machines that require forward flexion or bending probably should be avoided because they increase the moment arm, increase compressive loads on the spine, unless we can ensure proper technique. We probably should encourage sort of short lever type activities where there's clear instructions of in transitions in and out of types of exercises to avoid excessive bending or twisting. And we really need to take care when lifting weighted objects from the floor or even above our head, for example, a shoulder press type exercise, because we know that can increase axial loads on the spine. And finally, we need to teach uh, people with vertebral fractures spine sparing um, approaches to lifting. You know, teach safe lifting and moving, moving techniques. And one of the key movements is this hip hinge technique uh, when bending and picking up objects. So this is really flexing at the hips and knees, bringing the hips posterior to the base of support while maintaining your head over the base of support to keep the spine straight. Other elements we need to consider are certainly the step and turn technique, which you know, is an everyday activity for people. And so teach this properly to avoid excessive twisting or bending. You know, um, hold weights close to the body, short, lever of, short um, uh, levers, uh, avoid sort of, um, oh, if we're going to do twisting movements, make sure they're sort of slow and controlled and not to the end of range of motion. Um, if we're carrying objects like the groceries, you know, carry them in both hands to have an equal load. And if we need to do trunk activities, make sure they're supported when we're, we're, we're uh, flexing forward. But importantly, we need to teach people how to move and not tell them not to move because you have to do these activities on a daily basis. And so my key recommendations uh, around therapy or exercise for vertebral fractures, uh, we need a multimodal approach. Think of flexibility, range of motion exercises around the spine and the extremities. You may progress from supine, prone, standing to seated positions. Postural trunk and stability training is critical. We probably need to do it daily. That includes education and biofeedback to ensure correct posture. Spinal muscle strengthening is absolutely critical. Focus on endurance. Now, we want to prioritise form and alignment over intensity. Core stabilisation exercises are also important, um, which can progress to balance and mobility training. And clearly, safe body mechanics during normal activity daily living is absolutely crucial. So on that, I thank you for listening. And here is my details if you'd like any further information.